Get ready to move the conversation forward. This ain't your granddad's news and comment show. This is I Doubt It Podcast with Brittany Page and Jesse Dallimore. Welcome to the show, everybody. Episode 857 of I Doubt It Podcast. I am your host, Jesse Dollimore, as I always am. Joined today, as I always am, by your host, Brittany Page, everybody. So yesterday was one year of having Sweepy. Sweepy, mm. Sweepy the Bulldog. Sweepy the Bulldog. At Bully Sweepy on Instagram. Yeah, if you're yeah. interested in wholesome dog content, then that is where you can find it. Who 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 isn't fix my headphones here? Uh who isn't interested in wholesome derg content? I'm sure there's plenty of people <laughs> that that don't appreciate wholesome dog content, hate dogs. The don't losers see and them. the haters, as Donald Trump would say. Sure. So <laughs> We, you know, in all this time, you would think that we know everything there is to know about Sweepy, but no, we are still learning about her. And the latest thing that we learned is that she's very persnickety about the water that is provided for her to drink. It is interesting because you are also persnickety sure. about water and tasting of water. Like I, although let me say this. I'm not, uh-huh. <laughs> but DC water that comes out of the tap, what we refer to as sink water. Yeah. Uh, Horrifying. Is There's like a real shitty chemically aftertaste. I think it's, it's not good. It's pretty universally understood to be quite terrible as well, right? Yeah, I think so. Well, I mean, there are certain municipalities that have... His, I mean, famously great water. New York is one. Even LA has great water. Mm-hmm. You might disagree. Yeah. I, I think mean, it's a psychological thing that's just a hurdle you can't get over oh. turning on the faucet and drinking the water that comes out of the faucet. You do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where is it? Yeah. So, so it's a psychological so, problem. So what we discovered, though, is that Sweepy. Also has a psychological problem. It's not, it's, I, I, She's I mean, mentally it's, ill. That's what you're not saying. What I, what I mean is <laughs> it's a psychological hurdle for you. Mm. Yes. It's a hurdle for you to right, get over. That's right. So what we've discovered is the Sweepy just disappears and goes upstairs. Yeah, like, well, typically Sweepy wants to be around us all the time. So she tends to be where we are. And all of a sudden we will look around and there's no Sweepy to be found. And we will hear the little <laughs> pitter-patter of her paws going up the stairs. And we're like, what the hell? Why is she going upstairs? And so we would start to carefully observe what she was yeah. doing up there and we realized that she was going upstairs to drink water. Now she already has water on the main floor where we are most of the time with her when we're home and she chooses to go away from that water, go yeah. upstairs to the other water and so we kept thinking, well what's the difference between these two water bowls? Why is she choosing to go upstairs? That's way out of the way. Yeah, for sure. So well, so what it is, is I, when I go to bed every night, I fill um, like a four cup, like those to-go cups for soup mm-hmm. that you get from a restaurant. Yeah. Well, I bought a bunch of those from Amazon. So I've got a bunch of, you know, they're not like stained with turmeric and curry and stuff. They're brand new ones. Yeah. I don't know why I have to get that on the record. But I fill it with ice and water. And then in the morning, the water that I didn't drink, I just pour into her little water dish that's upstairs in our bedroom. Mm -hmm. And that's what she's doing. She likes the water out of the fridge, not out of the sink. I guess I missed that point. Um, And so she goes upstairs to slurp, slurp, slurp. Mm -hmm. The fridge, the filtered fridge water. Yeah. Just it's just bananas. That's her preference. So well, even it, the dog is not going to drink the DC sink water. That was going to be my point. That it really does speak to how terrible DC municipality how how bad their water is. Yeah, not great. <laughs> I mean, there's oftentimes I'll ask because when you go to a restaurant, you still or sparkling or whatever, and I'm like, well, I'll take still because I'm a regular person, and as long as it's not DC water. Yeah. I mean, I'll take what I get. (laughs) I'll take what they choose to give me. What they think I deserve, I'll take that. So happy anniversary, Sweepy. Yes, happy anniversary. One year 
of being a part of this freak show. Yes, at Bully Sweepy. Now, that is unfortunately where all of the happiness and joy ends on this show. So we just want to let everyone know that the rest of the show <laughs> is unfortunately going to be about the shooting it's been in, a, in Nashville. It's been a crazy week for the ups and downs, the topsy-turvy. I mean, with any mass shooting especially with a school shooting, it is that way. There's a lot of unknowns and there's a lot of speculation. There's a lot of guessing. But this week has been different because the person is allegedly trans or was allegedly trans and the right wing's going crazy with it. But we're going to get to all of that. I think we've got a little listener communication. Uh, before we do, I want to drop the phone number so you can sound off, so you can communicate with the show. Um, and use us as a sounding board to amplify your question or your comment. 657-464-7609. Of course, you can email a voice memo from your smartphone to idoubtit at dollamore.com. We got an email from someone who did not put their name in the body of the email. And when that happens, we assume the person wants to stay anonymous. So that is, if you are interested in communicating with the show, but you don't want to attach your name to it, which is very understandable in the current political climate. A lot of people would for prefer sure. to remain anonymous, and that is an option for yeah, you. Yeah, we'll respect that always, even for the, the haters who occasionally will write it. So this is from Anonymous. I just watched the footage released of the shooter both entering and being taken out by police. While this is a tragedy and the police response was commendable, I couldn't help but notice that I've never seen this much footage released of a school shooting before. I can't help but wonder if it was due to the fact that the shooter identified as trans and attacked a Christian school. Do you think this shooting will be used against the trans community, especially since... This person wrote, Fucker Carlson just aired a segment about trans gun ownership. Do you think this story is purposefully being shown in its entirety for a specific reason as compared to others? Thank you. Uh, my, my guess would be yeah. My guess would be yeah, especially related to Fox News. As far as uh, the Tennessee situation, the Nashville situation, I don't know. It, it would seem... Maybe it's like the, the the optimist of lo wanting to see the best in people that I would hope that that wouldn't be some ulter ulterior motive with the Nashville Police Department. But I, but I will admit not to um, drift into conspiracy territory. It does seem strange that it was an unedited bit of footage right away they got out to the public, which is unheard of. I mean, can you think of another moment where so quickly – the body cam footage was released to the public. Yeah, I don't know what to make of this because the footage of the shooter going into the school, going throughout the school was released in I believe fewer than 24 hours after yeah, the yeah. shooting. And then two body camera videos from two separate police officers were released of them entering the school and taking out the shooter. So... I, I think they have released footage of mass shootings before because I, I think I recall seeing that. I don't know how often, though. It feels like not very often. Well, remember Marjorie Stone, uh, Stoneman Douglas or, you know, the Parkland shooting. Uh, there was the all of the footage of the guy outside, the coward outside who wouldn't go in. Mm -hmm. Like, that was released at, way after the fact, though. That wasn't within hours of the shooting taking place. Yeah. So I, I don't, I don't know. But also... There's there's the other element of not only do we have the footage now, but we don't have this alleged manifesto. Right. That's not public, but the the footage is. So like the the video that shows the cops in the in a heroic, valiant light, that's all out there. But we don't have any information to further elucidate us relative to what the motivations were, or what took place. Yes, and the Nashville police chief is is saying that there is a manifesto that discusses the motives for the shooting and has alluded to the fact that the identity is the identity of the shooter as trans is part of the motivation for the shooting. Mm -hmm. uh, but that more information will come out about that. So ultimately, we we don't have all the information yet, but that doesn't matter to conservatives like Matt Walsh like Tucker Carlson, like these right-wing propagandists that are all over the internet and all over TV that are using this as an opportunity to respond to the emailer here 
to attack the trans community, to take one example yeah, yeah, yeah. of a mass shooting when we know, when when the data shows that it is by and large right-wing extremists that commit mass shootings. And they use this one example of a shooter that identifies as trans to somehow implicate the trans community at large and say that there's something unique about the threat, or if you're Matt Walsh, that there's something uniquely evil about the trans community and using language that is straight out of like a war, like like it's war yeah, on, yeah. on trans people. And we've been having a conversation about how strongly we support trans rights, how we will advocate for trans rights on this show. And some in the audience, you know, over the past few episodes have reacted negatively to that. And I want to say that the reason that we have taken such a strong stance on that is because of things like this, where yeah. you have the right wing again, using this as an opportunity to stoke fear and hatred and ultimately increase the risk of violence against the trans community. Yeah. The other thing that you've, you've really, you put your finger on it the other day we were talking about it. It's that so many people who consider themselves liberal or Democrat, not so much leftist, but you know, not conservatives are being swept up in what is an effective public information, disinformation campaign by conservatives. Uh, and they're people like um, Ray who wrote in that, that are using all of the, the terminology, all of this, the trains of thought about trans people, the bigotry, and they're just regurgitating it as though it came from them. But th th all of this is just propaganda being propagated by the Matt Walsh's of the world, the Ben Shapiro's of the world, the Michael Knowles of the world, the Tucker Carlson's of the world. Yeah, and I recently did a video about this where I, well, first of all, I wanted to originally do a video on reporting out of Mother Jones. The title of the article is Inside the Secret Working Group That Helped Push Anti-Trans Laws Across the Country. It's by reporter Madison Pauley. And it basically goes through the coordinated efforts of white Christian nationalist lawyers, yeah. of elected officials, of religious right goofballs that are all working together to ban gender affirming care. There's been hundreds of anti-trans legislation just this year, hundreds of bills right. that have been put forth just this year. And gender all across the country in different states. And gender affirming care has already been banned for people under age under the age of 18 in like 11 states. Yeah. So they're they're winning. They are making progress. They are making these policy goals that they have set. And unfortunately, because of the coordinated attack, I think people are falling victim to this, including people like Ray, people who consider themselves liberal in the audience who reacted negatively to us taking such a strong stance for trans rights. Yeah, tone checking us and then also deleting their Patreon support. It's I mean- Right, tone checking us in the midst of what we're seeing now, which if you go read Matt Walsh's replies, yeah, if you go read Ben Shapiro's replies, these are scary people. They are calling for genocide. They are rallying the troops. And if you're if you consider yourself a, a free thinker or someone who cares about humanity or a Democrat or a liberal or whatever, shouldn't it give you pause? that you're also on the same side as Matt Walsh, Ben Shapiro, and Donald Trump Jr. Sh shouldn't it make you think, mm, maybe I better reevaluate my position relative to human rights, relative to trans rights, because all of the other people that I'm parried, parroting are, are fucking Nazis, are fascists, are people who are in... in not even subtle language calling for the eradication of transgenderism like Michael Knowles did at CPAC. It's it's time to, whether or not you fully understand the issue at hand, it's time to pick a side. And again, people are gonna, oh, your, your tone, your tone, your tone. If you don't believe that trans rights are human rights, it's, 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 it's time to get on board. It, it is... It is just a fact. And in, in 30 years, you're going to be embarrassed. You're going to be mortified and trying to rewrite history about your opinions because it will be well known and established that trans rights are human rights and they have every, every right you have 
under our system of government and just humanity to, to live and exist unmolested by fascists like Matt Walsh. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a lot we could say. There's a lot we're going to say. Yeah. And I, I don't know, but you know what? Let's, before we get into all of the happenings uh, this week with Republicans failing to act or, or do anything about the, uh, mass death that keeps occurring in this country. Let's give thanks to our Patreon supporters, yes. including our new and existing Patreon supporters. The new Patreon supporters, Bob R. Bob R. CTK. CTK. Kelly D. Kelly D. Now, Kelly D is actually a longtime listener and supporter of the show. So I was interested when the name popped up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, back, back again, where I didn't, I didn't notice that Kelly right. was... I didn't notice Kelly was gone. Yeah. <laughs> Good to have you back. And let's see, Ashley JP. Ashley JP. And Paul D. Paul D. And then we want to give a shout out to our Patreon supporters who have increased the pledge. Mm -hmm. And that would be Mark M. Mark M. Matthias M. Matthias M. Chana R. Chana R. And that is... Oh. Thank you all very much. If you too are not yet a Patreon supporter, but you'd like to or are interested in what takes uh what it takes, go to patreon.com slash I doubt it podcast and pick a tier, see what's involved, see what the perks are, uh, blah blah blah. Every bit every little bit goes a long way. We are we are um buoyed by your support, and it does indeed keep the lights on, not even metaphorically. So thank you so much for your support. Uh, we would love to hear from you. 657-464-7609. Of course, you can email a voice memo from your smartphone to I doubt it at dollamore.com. Dollamocracy. Facing down pessimistic politics with realistic optimism. So one person that we really love on this show is Manu Raju. Yeah. And I was actually, I had the thought, because um, I'm watching all these reporters chase after these politicians in the halls of Congress <laughs> with their phones out. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. how fun would it be, right? Because you get to basically harass people for a living. Wow. Yeah. That's one way to look at it. <laughs> we also, it lets us, a little window into what Brittany Page's <laughs> ideal life would be like. I'm not, I mean, it, it looks fun. <laughs> they get to harass and bully people. It's really exciting. So well, at their jobs, they get paid for it. Yeah. No, I mean, but it's at the people's job and the p person who you're harassing, quote unquote. Yeah. It's their job to take the harassment. <laughs> yeah. Again, <laughs> it's, they deserve it though. Oh you know? yeah. And I, I Especially this week. It feels like harassment to them, but again, it is them holding power to yeah, account. Yeah. It's I'm, a joke I'm, about the harassment. Yeah. I just, the comment section is, you know. <laughs> So we love Mana Raju, who works for CNN. And in the aftermath of this shooting, there has been a lot of pressure on politicians because this has become a normal part of society. There's been 130 mass shootings this year. Yeah, over 130. That's more than there have been days in this year. Yeah. And so there's there's been, you know, renewed conversation about what are you going to do? And Manu Raju took some time to ask various Republicans in this news package what they plan to do. It's an all too familiar story, tearing apart communities and devastating families. Mass shootings, 130 in this year alone, including the rampage at a Christian school in Nashville, leaving six victims dead, including three nine-year-olds. But on Capitol Hill, Little has changed. So why not limit the to the AR-15s? Why not why not put a ban on that? If you're going to talk about the AR-15, you're talking politics now. Let's not get into politics. All right, let's not get into emotion because emotion feels good, but emotion doesn't solve problems. Sounds like they got a legit actor shooter at a school. An AR-15 was one of the weapons possessed by the killer during Monday's massacre. And has been frequently used in mass shootings following the 2004 expiration of the assault weapons ban. But President Biden lacks the support from Republicans who control the House and can block legislation in the Senate. They argue such a ban is ineffective and infringes on constitutional rights. Why not take action to ban AR-15s in the aftermath of all these terrible shootings? 
because I believe in the Second Amendment, and uh, we shouldn't, uh, you know, we shouldn't uh, penalize law-abiding uh, American citizens. The senator from Tennessee also declining to embrace further restrictions. What about banning those weapons that were used in attacks like these? I, I'm certain that the politics will wave into everything, but right now I'm not focused on the politics of the situation. I'm focused on the families. Even Andy Ogles, whose district includes the Covenant School in Nashville, is a longtime supporter of access to high-powered weapons. Why not ban AR-15s? Why not talk about the real issue facing this country in regards to the shooting, which would be mental health? But Congress did take steps to address mental health when it passed the most ambitious gun law in a generation just last year. Now even GOP supporters of that law are skeptical of any more Hill action. At the end of the day, I, I don't know if there's much space to do more, but I'll certainly look and see. But with mass shootings up sharply in the last few years, Democrats say that it's time to force a vote. We need a fight in Congress, and I'm prepared to conduct that fight. Others are as well. It's a fight Republicans are willing to have. Why are you opposed to reinstating this ban? Well, I mean, and a lot of people use ARs and AKs for sporting purposes. I've fired both of those things, um, so both of those firearms for sporting purposes. So, But listen, let's stay focused on the issue at hand, which isn't some generic question about guns. It's what happened to these children in this school by this shooter. Number two, Senate Republican John Thune about this issue. Also, given that there have been 130 mass shootings in just this year alone, whether any action is needed legislatively, he said it's, quote, premature. And also the Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy, for the last two days has not answered questions about this issue. I just tried to ask him about this again. He would not respond to any questions about whether action should be taken here. But McCarthy, would, along with the rest of his House Republican leadership team, voted against that bipartisan safety law that Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell supported just last year. So, Manaraju on Capitol Hill, thanks so much. So Manaraju alluded to it, an exchange that he had with John Thune. We'll get to that in a minute, but we want to talk about the specific Republican responses here. Yeah. And it's all the same things that we hear every single time, right? Even, even the referencing mental health that you heard there. I mean, how many times are we going to have a conversation trying to blame mental health? Other countries have comparable rates of right. mental health issues yeah. as the United States, and yet they do not have this problem because the variable that is really driving all of this is the ease of access to weapons, right. the number of guns that we have in this country. And in too many cases, weapons of war. The AR-15 is an analog. It's pretty much a carbon copy. There's a few elements that are taken away. It's an M16A2 service weapon. It is the same um, small arms that I that I carried in the Marine Corps. It's the same caliber. It doesn't have a three-round burst, but it's semi-automatic. It's the same, same gun. Right, and you heard Josh Hawley there. That was Josh Hawley talking about how, well, I've, I've shot these weapons, and a lot of people use them for game yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. well, a lot of people are also using them to kill other people. And and they'll always say, oh, well, handguns, if we, if we ban assault weapons, people still have handguns. Yeah, again, it's like they say, if, if we don't pass something to magically make any crime stop at all. All of it go away, right. Yeah, then it doesn't matter, Yeah. right? It's like these incremental things that we could do to reduce the rates of violence and mass death. No. Universal background checks. We could close the gun show, lo gun show loophole. We could have red flag laws at a federal level. Um, there are many things we could do. Well, and Biden has called to on Congress to pass the assault weapons ban. Again, well, that's the first thing we should do is to ban the AR. There is no, no, no reason why a weapon of war should be in the hands of a civilian walking the streets of this country. The, the difference between someone having access to a handgun and an AR-15 are oceans of difference between the weapons. Mm -hmm. the, the, the level of mass casualty and death and destruction that you can visit upon targets with an AR-15 is, it dwarfs what you could do with a handgun. It, right. It's just different. It's fucking different. And then these coward Republicans who think that they're fooling the American people, well, it's too soon, it's too soon. Well, when? 
When is it not too soon? If we have multiple shootings every single day in this country, then it's always going to be too soon. It's never going to be time to talk about it. We're living in the aftermath of a mass shooting every day. Every fucking day. And to say, oh, well, this is political. Well, when you talk about the AR-15, now it's political. We can't get political about this. Well, unfortunately for th these dumb shits, politics and getting political is the only way that we're going to be able to make a difference here, that we're going to make any kind of change is through the political system in our country. What do they expect? They've tried to pray the problem away. They've tried to thoughts and prayer the problem away. That's not working. And we still have dead kid after dead kid after dead kid. And Republicans just do not care. Well, and you're going to hear some more thoughts from the Senate Minority Whip John Thune, who was asked by Mana Raju again, what can we do? Polls have shown that a vast majority of voters support some changes to gun laws, like universal background checks. Are you concerned that Republicans look out of step with the public by opposing these kind of restrictions? Well, first of all, in, in response to what happened, a uh, horrific shooting in Nashville, uh, we all, uh, our thoughts are with the um, families, the victims, with the community. We are grateful for the quick, rapid response of law enforcement. And I think with respect to any um, discussion of legislation, it, it's premature. Uh, there's an ongoing investigation, and I think we need to let the facts come out. Again, I mean, I think we're going to, we'll, when we get the, the facts in from this uh, current investigation, um, we'll, uh, we'll have a better assessment of that. But I think right now, it's just premature to talk about it. And I, and I think there are a lot of um, grieving, hurting families in Nashville. And they want to support them. It's just cowardice. Yeah, it's like there's always going to be grieving people until something is yeah. done and this stops. Listen, th this weapon of war it, it should be the way, this should be a, a drum that gets beaten constantly in between and during and in the midst of public shootings like this. Because this shooter... I mean, imagine if they had had an AT4, uh, a, a 50 cal like machine gun, like a crew serve weapon that they were just firing on the school with. Would Jim Jordan, who you heard from the earlier clip, would he also say, well, I don't want to infringe upon every, any other law-abiding citizen's rights. Well, it's a weapon of war. It is a weapon of war just because we've had policy failures in this country that have allowed private citizens to own it doesn't mean it's appropriate. It is a weapon that can, can de deliver death long range, 400 yards away with someone who knows how to fire the weapon. It, it just Republicans are cowards. They're sinister and they are covered in blood money from the IRA, from the, the NRA and uh, other gun lobbying groups. Well, Republican Tim Burchett was going uh, this guy. viral in the aftermath of the shooting because he is a, a re Republican representative from Tennessee. He's from Knoxville, I think. But yeah, Tennessee congressman. And he actually, I mean, this is just such a remarkable interview, but he, he's he's again being asked, what can you do? Like, what can we do to make this stop? And he specifically says that there's no real role for Congress here to do anything. Do you think there's any role for Congress to play to, in reaction to this tragedy? Obviously, this is your state now, sure. but it's happened in every other state. Oh, it's happening. It doesn't matter what state it's happening in. It's we're all Americans. It doesn't matter the color of their skin. They all bleed red. It's, they're bleeding a lot. Um, I, I don't see any real role that we could do other than mess things up, honestly, because of the um, situation. It's um, uh, like I said, I don't think a criminal's going to stop from guns. You know, you can print them out on the computer now, 3D printing, and there's really, I, I don't think you're going to stop the gun violence. I think you, you've got to change people's hearts. You know, as a Christian, as we talk about in the church, and I've said this many times, I think we really need revival in this country. Uh, <laughs> what? Just a sinister character. What a terrible answer. That, well, cr listen, we can't pass laws. Congress would just mess it up. We can't pass any laws. Criminals are going to criminal, y'all. Although this guy is also on on the on the record as supporting bans through legislation on drag shows. Laws work. That's why we have laws against robbing banks. 
Well, it's also why they're banning things. I mean, it's ridiculous. They're banning drag shows. They're banning gender affirming care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Utah governor just signed a ban on minors using social media without parental consent. When they want to act to ban yeah. things, they act. Yeah. And he's saying, oh, people are bleeding a lot. Like, what are you saying? Yeah. Why would you say something like that? And then at the same time, he goes even further in this next clip. He says, we're not going to fix it. Three precious little kids lost their lives, and I believe three adults, I believe. Is. And, um, and the shooter, of course, lost their life, too. So it's, it's a horrible, horrible situation. And we're not going to fix it. Criminals are going to be criminals. And my daddy fought in the Second World War, fought in the Pacific, fought the Japanese. And he told me, he said, buddy, he said, if somebody wants to take you out and doesn't mind losing their life, there's not a whole heck of a lot you can do about it. I'm glad that we're just... <laughs> he's running his life on what his dad told him and we all have to live by what his dad told him. Is that what's happening right now? It is a bizarre way to go about your life and your job when your job is a lawmaker. Like how is he saying that he's, he's worthless. He has no, there's no efficacy in what his job is because what is it that you do here to quote office space? What is it you say you do here? <laughs> Tim Burchett. Yeah. I mean, you're a lawmaker. That's in the job description. Yeah. Dumb shit. Uh -huh. Well, criminals are going to be criminals. So I guess we'll just you do away with all laws then. Well, I guess since we're sharing things that our dad told us, my dad told me the Holocaust never happened. Right. My dad told me that there were like... Uh, armed men in those armor trucks that pick oh, up the right. money. Yeah. That they were like, like ready. It was like a scene right out of the town all the time inside the armor car trucks. <laughs> They're just ready to go. Yeah, all the time. Well, Tim Burch's daddy, he fought World War II, y'all. He's extra authoritative because he actually fought the fascists, according to Tim. Well, don't worry because Tim, the reporters, continued their harassment, <laughs> <laughs> continued their fantastic important job and uh, they kept pressing him listen Tim we need a solution and finally he gave a solution what should be done to protect people like your little girl from being safe at school well we homeschool her but you know that's our decision some people don't have that option and <laughs> frankly some people don't need to do it I mean, they don't have to um, it just suited our needs much better <laughs> good yeah. well your kids are gonna die oh well I guess you could homeschool them because there's nothing we can do. I I know I'm a lawmaker, but uh, I'd rather not make the laws because criminals are going to criminal. My kid's safe. Sorry. So here's what I want everyone to do. I want you to remember the deflated, defeated tone that Tim Burchett was displaying there when he's talking about how many people are bleeding how three children were killed, how three adults were killed in this mass shooting in his state where he's a representative. I want you to remember his tone about the, the mass killing that happened in his state. And I want you to compare it to his tone in this next clip where he's talking about the ban that Tennessee passed on public drag shows. A grown man dressed up like a woman should not be rubbing his crotch in front of a little child. That is ridiculous. Good on Governor Bill Lee and our Tennessee legislature. Um, the law goes into effect on July 1st. And, and you know, dadgummit, we don't put up with that, that, that crap in Tennessee, and we shouldn't. And the rest of the country should follow suit. This is, this is wrong, as wrong as it can be. And we've, we've, we've let this, these bunch of radicals push the envelope. You know, I have friends of mine that are, that are homosexual. And they tell me that, and, and they tell me the same thing. They say kids shouldn't be exposed to this. Right. This is a radical fringe that we are allowing to to declare normalcy. This is wrong as wrong can be. Imagine if Tim had that passion and that juice for banning guns. Yeah. In the well, aftermath of mass killing. Apparently, if if what I'm hearing is correct from Little Timmy, laws do work. He's celebrating the passage of a law that will go into effect July 1st, banning public drag shows in Tennessee. So that law worked. Why is it laws at the federal level that he would have a part in passing? Why won't they work? Right. And I mean, we can even look at Idaho. They have just, they're creating a new 
law, abortion trafficking. Yeah. You cannot take a minor out of the state to obtain an abortion without parental consent, or it's a felony. Yeah. And you're going to be facing two to five years in prison. Again, abortion trafficking. Another example of when they want to ban something, when they want to pass a law, yeah. when they want to take action, they will take the action. And the reason that they don't is because they choose not to. No mountain of dead kids is high enough to motivate Republicans to stop it from happening. They're going to do nothing. Yeah. And I I saw this clip of Jon Stewart talking to a Republican. Honestly, I had the thought, you should get his name just so you can provide people with the information. And honestly, I, I thought, who cares? Who cares which yeah. Republican he's talking to? This Republican represents... All Republicans, every single Republican that you've heard in all of these clips so far today on this show, they all say the same thing. And what's nice about this clip is Jon Stewart tells this Republican exactly what we're all feeling. You want to ban drag show readings to children? To my why? House, yes. Why? Why, why? What are you protecting? Why can we prohibit ch children from voting, those under 18 from voting? Why are you banning, also that? Is, is that free speech? Are you infringing on that performer's free speech? They can continue to exercise their free speech, just not in front of a child. Why? Because the government does have a responsibility to protect. I'm sorry? The government does have a responsibility uh -huh. in certain instances to What's protect the children. leading cause of death amongst children in this country? And I'm gonna give you a hint. It's not drag show readings to children. Correct, yes. So what is it? I'm presuming you're gonna say it's firearms. No, I'm not gonna say it like it's an opinion. That's what it is. It's firearms, more than cancer, more than car accidents. And what you're telling me is, you don't mind infringing free speech to protect children from this amorphous thing that you think of. But when it comes to children that have died, you don't give a flying fuck to stop that because that shall not be infringed. That is hypocrisy at its highest order. And he is not wrong. Again, no mountain of dead kids is high enough for Republicans because they don't fucking care. They don't. And I challenge anyone to, to convince me otherwise because if they did care, they would do something, something small, something incremental to get us toward a society that doesn't have to contend with mass shootings on a more than daily basis. Yeah. And I, again, I, I want to tell the people that are, you know, on, on the left, who consider themselves on the left, who may be falling prey to this coordinated attack to have you turn against the trans community. This is another instance where the right is using this shooting to try to further their attacks on the trans community. And all of this is linked. All of this is linked. And I, we recently watched a Vice News clip from, I think the reporter is named Vegas, Vegas something. Again, I should have noted this. What's wrong with me not getting names? And he's in Idaho. Yeah, he actually went to Idaho at a church called The Well, and it had like a vaguely sexual like slogan. Yeah, come thirsty and drink it up no, or something I, like that. That's seriously what it was. I think that's what it is. I mean, it's, it's something obscene. about it's something about thirsty and you know drink as much as you can pour down your gullet. <laughs> <laughs> so again, it it highlighted it highlighted this network of Christian nationalist groups that are advancing these bills across the country not in a only in coordinated way in a coordinated attack yeah. on the trans community. And this one is specifically about banning drag, but he actually talked to, I think, the leader of this church about what he ultimately wants to see in our society. What would your ideal America look like? So we would want to see government following biblical law when it comes to moral issues. I mean, it would look more like the United States in the 17 and 1800s. When you follow God's laws, you experience the same type of uh, prosperity, uh, freedom, uh, no matter what time you're, you're implementing those laws in. Well, I mean, I, I, like I wouldn't say that America was necessarily a free country back in the 18th century. I, I would I would beg to differ. America 
America at that time was the most free country in, in the world and has remained that way since. What's going to happen to gay people? Um, somebody who is same-sex attracted would have just as much of a place in society. Um, we would probably not recognize, um, you know, the a marriage. They're, so not really. Not really just as much of a place. Oh, absolutely just as much of a place. But there would be certain things that they would be barred from. No, they wouldn't be barred from anything that anyone else would be allowed to do. Except marriage. Well, they could still get married, right? They would just have to marry somebody of the other biological sex. So, <laughs> I... <laughs> What? Yeah. We we have to set boundaries on marriage, right? We, we already do with polygamy. Do you ever wonder if you're like on the wrong side of Footloose with Kevin Bacon? <laughs> we don't want the dancing to take place. Yeah, exactly. Well, is that what you're saying? No, of course not. But we will keep pushing until biblical truth and Christian morality is the prevailing philosophy in the public square. So the scary thing about this, if you're watching this on YouTube, you're seeing the video. If you're listening to this on whatever podcatcher you use to listen to the show, you're not watching it. But this guy is saying all of this with a full teeth smile. Oh, yeah. Every single tooth in his mouth is visible when he's smiling. And, and that's to ingratiate you to what he's saying, right? He's saying it in a friendly way. He doesn't sound vicious. He doesn't sound mean. No, they have all the rights of everyone else. He's not raising his voice. He's not attacking. But what he's saying is horrifying. It's dehumanizing. He's saying that the United States of America was the freest it's ever been in the 17 and 1800s. When slavery was the order of the day, when women didn't have the right to vote, when if you were black, you couldn't vote in this country. And he wants... By his own words, he didn't use the phrase Christo-fascism, but that is what he is wanting. And they are making strides toward that, especially in states like Idaho right now. Yeah, and I saw you have a reaction to the Footloose conversation, and I think we're on the same yeah, page. Why make it all fucking cute? The, oh, well, you want to be, you want to band dancing? <laughs> fucking shut up. Take this guy seriously. Don't make a goddamn joke out of it. Well, and I think it's important to know when we talk about the coordinated attacks on the trans community right now, the coordinated um, legislation that they are distributing, trying to pass across the across the country with the anti uh, drag legislation, the bans on gender affirming care. They are organizing across the country. They're yeah. going to churches to sell their message. They're going and they are organizing. The right wing is right. very good, very adept when it comes to organizing. They are making Christian uh, nationalism very palatable to the church going crowd. Mm -hmm. I mean, he said, I want the government following biblical law. Well, we have the separation of church and state under the Constitution, the First Amendment of the Constitution. He's not, so he wants to do like Donald Trump advocates for, terminating the Constitution of the United States because that's what that would take for us to implement uh, biblical law in our government. Mm -hmm. This is dangerous. Yeah. And if you're parroting anti-trans rhetoric, you're on this guy's team. You're not a good person. You're just not. Reevaluate how you feel about this. Human lives hang in the balance, not just about guns, but about the trans rights issue too. We want to know what you think. You can call, leave us a voicemail, 657-464-7609. Of course, you can email a voice memo from your smartphone to I doubt it at dollamore.com. So I was honest about the fact that we were going to talk about the shooting the whole time. I, I was desperately searching for some sort of taking care of biz good news yeah, section, yeah, yeah. which, by the way, if you ever come across good news, please send it to us. Yeah, you we're always looking. At, I doubt it at dollamore.com, or you can even just call 657-464-7609 and tell us what the story is, and I can Google and find it myself. But it is hard a lot of times to find positive news stories to end the show with in the Taking Care of Biz segment. So, uh, you know, I guess I'm outsourcing that work to the audience now. Um, 
But get on it, everybody. Yeah. And I'm also I'm not setting up a story here that's positive. So just sorry yeah, yeah, about yeah. that. But well, it's but, continuing with what we're talking about. Yeah. Again, more justification for why the AR-15 should be banned and not allowed to be used by civilians. We shouldn't have access to it, let alone easy access to it. Yeah. So the Washington Post recently did an in-depth analysis on the AR-15. I think it's a series that they're going to be publishing. But in in response to that, CNN's Aaron Burnett had on a trauma surgeon, Dr. Lillian Liao, to talk about the specific and unique effects of the AR-15 on the human body. You know, these... Um High velocity firearm injuries such as the AR-15 that you're showing creates devastating wounds. Um, big body cavities um, are seen if the victim makes it to the trauma center alive. And really, most patients have no time um, to um, bleed. Uh, you can bleed to death in as little as five minutes. And so uh, with the type of wound that's created, um, most people will not make it to a hospital, let alone a trauma center alive. Those that do have large gaping holes in their body, we're missing areas that what we would call muscle, um, what people would call bone, those things are missing. Um, skin and fat, um, all of that is missing. Some body parts are not recognizable. Um, I am part of a um, very sophisticated regional trauma system that unfortunately cared for um, victims from two mass shootings. And from the first mass shooting in Sutherland Springs, we really learned about how we can save more lives from high velocity firearm injuries by looking back at the patients that we did not receive and how we could help them slow down their bleeding, um, help them refuel the tank because you only have so much blood in a human body. And if we could refuel that tank before they get to a hospital, then there's a potential to save those lives. And and when we talk about assault weapons in this country, and, and just I just want to put, I mean, as, as gruesome and horrible as this conversation is, it's needed um, to inform the political conversation. So when you talk about an AR-15, there's another animation the Washington Post has. It just simply shows the differences in exit wounds between an AR-15 and a smaller uh, nine millimeter. So the small isolated hole from a nine millimeter bullet fired by a handgun uh, in blue and then in orange, that's the gaping exit wound from the AR-15. Uh, the, the difference here is very stark. So when, when you talk about the type of weapon used, it sounds like you're just saying clearly from a medical perspective, to state the obvious, there's a huge difference. There, there's absolutely a huge difference. And the tissue destruction from these AR-15 type um, firearms is completely different than a regular um, handgun. Um, we have to take these patients who actually make it to the hospital alive multiple times to the operating room to clean up tissue that continues to die off over the course of the next week to two weeks before we can even begin any kind of reconstruction of the body parts. And that is the problem. Listen, when we talk about this and gun control from this particular angle, we're not specifically, look, there's a lot of people, look, I'm not a, uh, an anti-Second Amendment person. I'm not a ban all the guns person. I believe we do have a natural right to self-defense. And if that means a handgun, I'm okay with that. I'm not saying you shouldn't be able to own a shotgun or a hunting rifle, but an AR-15 is an especially dangerous and sinister weapon that is a weapon of war. That is what it is. And there is, just as you wouldn't want someone walking around with a shoulder-fired anti-tank weapon or a 50 caliber crew-served weapon to plant down and start taking out Jeeps as they drive down the street, you don't want someone having this particular weapon either. It is that simple. It does. It is designed for mass damage and casualties. That's what it's designed for. It it carries with it um, physical ramifications unlike any other weapon that is available to the public. 
A handgun doesn't do the same damage that an AR-15 does. Fact. ER doctors will tell you. You just heard one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I know that there were some visual things that they were referencing in that clip there that if you're not watching on YouTube that, you know, you weren't seeing. But and if you're not, you could go to the YouTube video and check it out. Sure. But they also described it well enough that there's a, a huge difference between the damage that it creates not only within the human body, but also the exit wounds yeah. are, are completely different. And well, what, what you should do, Google like AR-15 watermelons and see videos of people shooting cantaloupes and watermelons with an AR-15. It is, it just should tell you the kind of, of, of results that happen, especially if you have a tiny little child body. And again, no mountain of dead children is high enough for Republicans to give a flying fuck about this issue. That is just the way it is. We would love to know what you think. We want your feedback. You can call, leave us a voicemail. We can play on the show, 657-464-7609. Of course, you can email a voice memo from your smartphone. I doubt it at dollamore.com. Uh, if you are on the fence or have been thinking about supporting the show, now is as good a time as any to help produce our content. You can go to patreon.com slash I doubt it podcast, pick your tiers, see what's involved, uh, see what the perks are. We would love to have you in the Patreon family. Uh, we're going to leave you there. We love you guys. We appreciate you very much. And we will see you next time. Until then, for Brittany Page, I'm Jesse Dollamore. And this has been... I doubt.